Hi, in this video, we are going to study the rise of nationalism in Europe. We will start by reading the end of the French Revolution and then after, we will move towards the making of nation state in Europe. In this video, we are focusing on the events that happened after French Revolution and the emergence of new middle class. We will also talk about liberal nationalism. So, let us start. During the 19th century, the idea of nationalism made changes in political and mental world of Europe. The idea of nationalism resulted in the creation of nation states. Nationalism is a sense of identity with the nation. A nation state is an independent state in which the majority of its citizens and not only its rulers came to develop a sense of common identity and shared history made through a struggles, the actions of leaders and the common people. The French Revolution happened in 1789 that led to transfer of sovereignty from the monarchy to a body of French citizens. After gaining power, the French revolutionaries introduced various systems and practices that could create a sense of collective identity amongst the French people so that people can connect with the nation such as the idea of La Petre, the fatherland, and Les Citoyens, the citizen, was chosen. A new French flag, the tricolor, was chosen to replace the former royal standard. The state's general was elected by the body of active citizens and renamed the National Assembly. New hymns were composed, oaths taken and martyrs commemorated, all in the name of the nation. A centralized administrative system was put in place, internal custom duties and dues were abolished, uniform system of weights and measures was adopted. French became the language of the nation and regional dialects were discouraged. The revolutionaries in France viewed this product as ideal. Thus, they declared it was mission and the destiny of the French nation to help other European people by liberating them from the despotic rule of the monarchs and become nation like France. When the news of the events of the France reached the different cities of Europe, it inspired them. Educated middle class setting up Jacobin clubs. Their activities and campaigns prepared the way for the French army which moved into Holland, Belgium, Switzerland and much of Italy in the 1790s. But the Republic came to an end in France and in 1799, French Revolution ended in France and Napoleon Bonaparte rose to power. In 1804, he became Emperor of France and thus destroyed democracy in France. He further expanded his empire and brought many reforms that he had already introduced in France. He introduced Uniform Civil Code in 1804, popularly known as the Code of Napoleon, which did away with all the privileges based on worth, established equality before the law, and secured the right to property. In the Dutch Republic in Switzerland, in Italy and Germany, Napoleon simplified administrative divisions, abolished the feudal system, and freed peasants from serfdom and manorial dues. Serfdom means a peasant or worker had to provide services to their lords. They own land but had to pay rent for it. That is called manorial dues. All these things, such as services and rents, were removed. In the towns too, guild restrictions were removed. Guilds are basically associations of craftsmen or merchants created to establish monopoly over trade. Transport and communication systems were improved which helped peasants, artisans, workers and new businessmen. The uniform laws, a standardized weights and measures and a common national currency facilitated the movement and exchange of goods and capital from one region to another. This proved very helpful for businessmen and a small scale producers of goods. Now, talking about the reaction of the local people to French rule. Initially, in many places, 
such as Holland and Switzerland, the French armies were welcomed as harbingers or indicators of liberty. But soon the people realized that these new and efficient administrative arrangements made by Napoleon came at the cost of compromised political freedom, means it denied the political freedom of the people. Increased taxation, censorship, forced services into the French army, which were required to conquer the rest of Europe, all seemed to outweigh the advantages of the administrative changes introduced by him. In 1815, representatives of the European powers, Britain, Russia, Prussia and Austria collectively defeated Napoleon. They met and drew up the Treaty of Vienna of 1815 with the object of undoing most of the changes made during the Napoleonic Wars. According to Vienna Treaty, the Bourbon dynasty restored to power in France, France lost the territories it had annexed under Napoleon, the Kingdom of the Netherlands which included Belgium was set up in the north and Geneva was added to the Piedmont in the south to prevent French expansion in future. Prussia was given important new territories on its western frontiers and a portion of Saxony in the east. Austria was given control of northern Italy. Russia was given part of Poland. Napoleon's German Confederation of 39 states left untouched. After the defeat of Napoleon in 1815, European governments were driven by a spirit of conservatism. What is this conservatism? Conservatism is a political philosophy that gave importance to traditional institutions of a state and society, such as monarchy, the church, social hierarchies, property, and the family. Conservative regimes that were set up in 1815 were autocratic who did not tolerate criticism. Most of them imposed censorship on newspapers, books, plays, and songs, which reflected the ideas of liberty and freedom. However, the memory of the French Revolution continued to inspire liberals. During the mid-18th century, there were no nation-states in Europe. Germany, Italy, and Switzerland were divided into kingdoms duchies and cantons whose rulers had their autonomous territories. Diverse people lived under autocratic monarchies who did not see themselves as sharing a collective identity or a common culture. For example, the Habsburg Empire of Austria-Hungary included the French, Italian and German-speaking people. Socially and politically Aristocracy was the dominant class who owned estates in the countryside and also townhouses. They were numerically small groups. They spoke French for purposes of diplomacy and in high society, and their families were often connected by ties of marriage. Tenants and small landowners who worked as serfs are called peasants. They form majority of population. Differ than these two classes, there is a new class emerging in the mid-18th century due to industrialization, which happened during second half of the 18th century and 19th century. A working class population and middle classes made up of industrialists, businessmen, and professionals. These groups were smaller in number till late 19th century. They were educated and liberal and popularized ideas of national unity and the abolition of aristocracy. Ideas of national unity in the early 19th century Europe were closely allied to the ideology of liberalism. The term liberalism derives from the Latin root liber, meaning free. For the new middle classes, liberalism stood for freedom for the individual and equality of all before the law. Politically, it means government by consent. Economically, liberalism stood for the freedom of markets and the abolition of a state-imposed restrictions on the movements of goods and capital. Let's try to understand these economic restrictions in a clear way. For example, in the first half of the 19th century, 
German speaking regions a confederation of 39 states each state had its own currency custom barriers weight measures proved obstacles to economic exchange and growth in 1834 a customs union or jolverian was formed which abolished tariff barriers and reduced the number of currencies from over 30 to 2 during the years after 1815 due to suppressive regime liberal nationalists went underground Many secret societies were formed whose main aim was to train revolutionaries and spread their ideas. During this time, two year revolutionary meant a commitment to oppose monarchical forms and to fight for liberty and freedom. The revolutionary believed the creation of nation states as a necessary part of a struggle for freedom. Now, we'll talk about Giuseppe Mazzini. an Italian revolutionary he was born in Genoa in 1807 and became a member of the secret society of Carbonari at the age of 24 he was sent into exile in 1831 for attempting a revolution in Liguria he founded two more underground societies first young italy in marseille and then young europe in berne he believed in the unification of italy into a republic on the basis of italian liberty inspired by his ideas secret societies were set up in germany france switzerland and poland that's all in this video in the upcoming video we'll study the events that happened between the period of 1830 to 1848 in which we'll study the july revolution greek revolution and the revolution of liberals thanks for watching the video